At the beginning of this episode, let's play a game. In the game, we play a silicon man. The goal of this game is to find the lowest point of the mountain. Press the spacebar to mark my current lowest point and its height. The height we just recorded is 39. Now, let's find the lower place according to the topographical map. As a human being, I can only control avatar to run around and keep trying and looking without the aid of numerical values and topographic maps. We need to spend a lot of time in the following content. Let's watch how to let the robot find the lowest point on it all. In theory, the neural network structure I have built now can handle all the classification problems. Increase or decrease as long as it constantly adjusts values of W and B, it can separate these two types of data. In the last video episode, we succeed in getting the machine to adjust automatically to separate these four points. As a human contestant, we can separate them because of my well-designed visual model as a reference, which allows us to see whether the direction I adjusted manually is reasonable. <laughs> but the machine can't understand our visual graphic interface. Think back to the examples of crocodiles and snakes. If we want a machine to solve this problem, we need to set a target value, uppercase Y, and an output value, lowercase Y. When the output value is consistent with the target value, that is, uppercase Y is the same as lowercase Y, then its classification is correct. If they are not the same, the classification of machine is wrong. So the closer the output value lowercase y is to the target value uppercase y, the more accurate the machine will be. For example, we set the output target of 0, 0 and 1, 1 to 0 and put them into the same category. Set the output target of 0, 1 and 1, 0 to 1 and classify them into another category. In the case where all the parameters are 0, no matter what the input is, C3 is 0. After the step function, the output of all points are 1. To measure the error, our machine can calculate the absolute value of uppercase y minus lowercase y. If the error of 0, 1 and 1, 0 is 0, the classification is correct. The error of 0, 0 and 1, 1 is 1, then the classification is wrong. We can add the error of each point by dividing the total number of input points, which is 4, and we get the result is 0 0.5. This value is the error of the whole model. The lower the error, the more accurate the machine will be. If three points are correct, the result is 0 0.25, and this result is affected by each weight and threshold in the model. So we get a function with nine variables, w1, w2, w3, w4, w5, w6, b1, b2, and b3. This is the loss function in common machine learning models. This result will be squared again to facilitate calculation. The point is, in the world of machine learning, loss function is our core concept. With this, we can give the machine a clear goal to make the loss function as low as possible. Let's visualize the concept as a downhill problem. <laughs> These nine variables and low values form a hill in 10-dimensional space. Robots need to climb and climb and climb. In these 10 spaces, until it reaches its lowest point, it won't end until it reaches bottle. It must be impossible to run around like I did. We need to find an algorithm to point the way to the machine so that it can find our way down the hill. This algorithm is called gradient descent. 
gradient descent is the first order iterative optimization algorithm for finding a local minimal of a differentiable function. Let's build a staircase first. As low as we go down the staircase, we can reach the lowest point. Next, we will first go down the stairs in the function of one variables, then two variables. Finally, we will go down the stairs to the lowest point in the function of nine variables. Let's start with a simple quadratic function, y equals x squared. Let's pick a point at random, wherever it is. By adjusting x, it automatically finds its way to the lowest point, the place where y is the smallest. This is our goal. It's not hard to do this, but you only need to know two things, the directions and distance of each step. More specifically, should x get bigger or smaller? <laughs> How much should it be added or reduced? The direction problem is easy to solve. Just draw a tangent. If the tangent slope of the current point is negative, then we should make the x larger and go to the right. If the tangent slope is positive, we should make x smaller and go left. The value of the tangent slope can be calculated from the derivative of current curve y prime equals 2x. Then there is second question, how long should it work at a time? Let's try to set step length to 1. It is easy to miss the lowest point if the step is too big. So, can 0 0.1 make our ball to get the lowest point? Although it can reach the lowest point, its progress is too slow. A fast way is to make the distance of movement proportional to the slope. For example, in steep places, you can safely stride, while in graduate and gentle places, to prevent you from missing the lowest point, you need to move slowly and small steps. This is the core concept of gradient descent. In this function with only one variable, the gradient is the tangent slope. Determining the next iteration based on the gradient will be more stable and faster than based on the fixed value. Of course, it is not enough to only have a gradient. For example, the gradient of minus 2.5 and 6.25 is minus 5. Then, the next point will jump to the 2.5 and 6.25. Then the ball jumps repeatedly at these two points. So we're going to multiply the gradient by a ratio, which we call step length. This is the learning rate we mentioned in the example of crocodiles and snakes. If we take two big steps, we will miss the lowest point in the first step, and then go further and further. However, if the step size is too small, this function will fall slowly. This is the process of letting the machine go down the hill on the function with only one variable. Place the ball, select the step size, find the direction and distance according to the gradient, iterating several times, and nailed it.
if we add variables, let's say equals x squared plus y squared, then we can get a three-dimensional image like this. Now, this point needs to automatically adjust x and y to the lowest point on the z-axis. Isn't it a bit like going down the hill? At this moment, there are not only two options for the point to become bigger and smaller, it can go in any direction. Using the method we just did, our goal is to find the direction and sides that cause z to drop the fastest. We can disassemble the problem. Where should the ball go on the x-axis and the y-axis? Let's find them separately. The two of them should be the first falling values. Then we compare them in the same direction. So how much should it go along x-axis? Assuming that the value of y has been determined, z will change it as x changes. As before, at this point, the steeper of the rate change of x, the greater the value that should be taken in the next iteration, which is indicated by a blue arrow. Similarly, we can assume a definite x values, and we can also calculate the slope of each tangent on this line. The slope is represented by the length of the arrow. At any point, add up the arrows in the x and the y directions. It is the direction that currently causes z to drop the fastest. Similar to the previous, we have to multiply it by an appropriate proportion so that the ball can fall gently without skipping the lowest point in the first step. In terms of numerical value alone, each iteration allows x to change the slope of x to z, while y to change the slope of y to z. Repeat a few times, it will gradually approach the lowest point. In the process of just going downhill, finding the derivative is a crucial step. Because the derivative means slope, only slope can allow the machine to determine its own adjustment direction and amplitude, so as to complete the automatic adjustment and reach it the lowest point. But what exactly is derivation? Why do we have to do this? I will explain more to you in the next installment of Calculus. Let's go back to the neural network. In the function of these 9 variables, essentially what we have to do is go downhill in 10 dimensions. The automatic adjustment of the variable is completed, and the error is getting lower and lower by calculating the partial derivative of the loss function c to w1, w2, w3, w4, w5, w6, b1, b2, and b3. In the 17th century, Newton and Leibniz proposed calculus. In 1847, in order to solve complex and lengthy orbital equations of celestial bodies on the basis of calculus, the French mathematician Augustin Louis Cauchy invented gradient descent, backpropagation, recurrent convolutional neural networks, generative adversarial network. This mathematician may not think that hundreds of years later, their research results become the cornerstone of artificial intelligence. No matter whether the neural networks has 9 parameters or 9,000 parameters, 9 million parameters or 9 billion parameters. <laughs> mm. 
After descending gradients over and over again, the machine can accurately classify the data relatively. As long as it can classify, the machine can develop the ability to recognize images and process language. Now we have a neural network. Theoretically, it can solve any classification problem. This gradient descent algorithm allows the machine to automatically adjust the parameters. Then there is only the last step away from the birth of artificial intelligence, frantically deriving the parameters.